Today's blog post is out, and the most thing, uh, the thing that I'm the most excited about is Beast is going to finally be fountainable or farmable. We've also going to get multiple men, and another X Factor going to be Polaris, and we're going to get three-year anniversary event. One of them is a little bit controversial. It's like, do you want us to hoard, or do you not want us to hoard, Scopely? I mean, uh, Wolverthor just sent me this, and it's like, don't hoard, and then... <laughs> It kind of feels like they uh, introduce events that definitely, without a doubt, uh, give advantages to people that hoard. And yet, at the other times, they say, like, oh, we're not going to do that. It's very confusing, and I'm going to explain why it's frustrating. Let's keep going. Let's read the post. Three times around the sun. Greetings, Commander. Break out the balloons, streamers, and cake. Because this week we're revealing the details around our third anniversary celebration. And the third anniversary should be on the 28th. Well, the technical third anniversary is on the 28th. That's because it came out three years ago on the 28th. I'm sure the event is going to line up around that. But make sure you save for some extra cake because X Factor's newest members is stopping by. And let's just say he's bringing some surprised guests. Uh, and Multiple Men's kit looks quite good, actually. We're going to go over that for sure. After that, we'll have some exciting news about our... Our new reoccurring legendary event schedule. An X-Men member is on the move. And events featuring our heavy-hitting ladies. But first, prepare up the party and the entire galaxy we'll be talking about. And this is a stellar celebration. Now, I just want to say, I don't know exactly how Silver Surfer is going to be released initially. Uh, so this might have something to do with it, may not. The one thing that I'm, I'm fairly confident is not going to be a, a gold milestone event like Emma in Symbiote Spider-Man. It's going to be something new, and then eventually it's going to be tied to raid milestones in some way. But the initial event might be tied to this. We'll see. I'm not sure. Silver Surfer will join Strike soon, and though you can't recruit him yet, to help prepare for his arrival, he'll throw in an event of cosmic proportions, stellar celebration, celebrate three years of Marvel Strike Force, fun with events that will cause a big bang, solar, galactic, and celestial orbs, so this kind of reminds me of like the chimichanga event, if you will. Uh, make your roster go supernova with these limited time cosmic essence currency and the solar galactic and celestial orbs. Probably those are just um, the three different types, you know, like a, a, a purple and an orange and a blue, right? Earn cosmic essence via blitz battles, campaign nodes, and select daily objectives, and then use this special currency to open event orbs with a supply store with orange, purple, and blue gear rewards. I'm guessing that's what it is. All right. Dark matter milestones. Blast off by opening solar, galactic, and celestial orbs, turn character shards, gear, gold, training modules, and other resources. Now, this is going to be the most controversial thing in the entire post. Uh, and I have some mixed feelings about it, but I'm just going to say it feels bad. feels bad. Turn your war efforts into milestone rocket fuel by spending war credits and elite war credits to hit milestones to earn cosmic estimates. So the currency they're talking about there is this one right here and this one right here, which is vital uh, to get 15s and to move forward in Dark Dimension 4. Uh, not only that... Uh, someone on Reddit poted out, you know, Killmonger said, it's also a bit disingenuous to buff gear 15 and war related currencies, then tell us to hoard them a week later. It's a bit disingenuous to buff G15 and war related currencies, then tell us to hoard them a week later. So yeah, those currencies were buffed and, and probably a lot of people spent all of them. And then we get a notification saying, uh, this is going to happen now. It's going to be a anniversary calendar, log in every day for 14 days to earn the, the currencies. And we're guessing on how that's going to work. Uh, patch is the 16th. Right now, uh, there is a Moon Knight event running for another nine days. So the, it, the, we're guessing that this event will probably start somewhere right here. You know, it, it, probably at the end of the Moon Knight event. But, you know, and then the, the three-year anniversary is the 28th. So I wouldn't be surprised if this all this stuff started happening around the, the 22nd or the 23rd. So a lot of people annoyed by this, understandably so, because uh, do you want us to hoard or do you not want us to hoard? The people that hoarded this currency get the benefit. And literally last week, they doubled the rewards on these and probably people that have been hoarding them dumped them. And now they're big surprise. We're going to have an event. 
I mean, do you want to do orb opening events or not do orb opening events? I, I don't understand what they're trying to do here. All right, bonus events coming during the event training gain, and these are probably all gonna run at separate times, and these usually pop up in the event tabs. Double training modules, love that. Gear explosion, three times origin gear, geology bounding, double isolate crystals from campaign nodes, and then energy overload. Cool. All right, let's go into multiple man, and I love this guy's kit. I think it's quite good. It's gonna be a war offense kit, but it does offer uh, some unique mechanics to it. It kind of feels like a cross between Loki and uh, Kingpin, let's say, like a better version of Loki and hybrid combined. And then also, I'm, I'm just gonna put this out there for sure, you know, Symbiotes and, and Astonishing X-Men will probably just run over this because of um, all the, the dupes and, and the, all the extra turn meter that Carnage passive and Jubilee's passable. Protect your X-Factor team with a one-man army, multiple man. Jimmy Madrox is a mutant with the ability to create perfect duplicates of himself referred to as a dupe. Uh, not like Red Star dupes. Not at all. Very different, clearly. I'm glad that you, we got to define that it's not those kind of dupes. When he's physically impacted, a unique power has led him to being dubbed Multiple Man. Du duplication process uh, includes any clothing he's wearing and the greater the kinetic impact, the greater the number of the duplicates produced. Multiple Man can communicate telepathically with his dupes and reabsorb them, which integrates the memories, experiences, skills gained by the dupe. So he gets buffs from them. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, there's even... So before we get into this, uh, any given time on one side of the board, there's a maximum of 10 characters. So one of his abilities says summon nine. It won't summon nine if there's five people out there. It'll only summon five more, but it will fill the board. It, it maxes out at 10. Uh, it looks pretty cool, actually, And I, it's, but it's going to be an offensive war team. As a member of the X Factor, X Factor team, which we have uh, Longshot and Shatterstar, Multiple Man is a unique protector with high health and resistance. He used dupes to protect himself and his allies. Hey, I use dupes <laughs> to protect myself and my allies with red stars. I'm just saying, I, I did it first. Instead of wearing a class, using a classic taunt, multiple man's dupes heal multiple men while they die, as well as steal positive effects from enemies and then spread them to multiple men. And because the taunt gets applied to the dupes, because uh, he has like this three, uh, three turn cooldown ability where he, he, he brings out some dupes and they get taunt and death proof. Kind of reminds me of Loki. Uh, multiple gains advantage over characters who specialize in breaking down a single protector. Multiple man works best when paired with Polaris. So they've given us the, the name of the fourth X Factor. So they talk about him a couple times. No information on the kit. That might come out later. But uh, Polaris is going to be a uh, part of the next patch as well. And the rest of the X Factor has multiple man special ability clears negative effects from himself. If Polaris is an ally and his passive ability increases resistance for all X-Force allies. Now, I do want to say that his special, we're going to normally I go passive first, but on this kit, I want to kind of read the special first because it kind of explains some of the things in the, in the, in the passive. So this goes off turn one, energy cost three, three, summon two dupes, remove all negative effects from all dupe allies. So all of the, the summons, if you will, apply taunt and death proof to all dupe allies. So it kind of reminds me of Loki a little bit right there. Except for it's going to be Taunt and Death Proof. If Polaris and Ally clear all negative effects from self and gain immunity for one turn. I would skip down to his passive. When enemy attacks multiple men, summon a dupe. So that's another way. Probably going to want to save him for last. But, but the way they set this kid up, he's really going to probably be used on offense and war. I don't think this guy is going to be used on defense anywhere. Uh, specifically because of Carnage and Jubilee's passive. On death of an ally dupe, heal for 5% of this character's max health. Okay, so now on war offense, and this is probably the first time I'm glad for a, a, a war offense specific tag. Normally I hate these, but I don't think I would want to play against this guy on defense. It just sounds horrible. Summon an additional dupe when multiple man is attacked. So two. On spawn, summon with two. Gain 30% resistance. And non-summon X factor allies gain 30% resistance. So now let's read the, the kit for the dupes. Uh, and also, I want to point out that this is that it's also of interest is that he is a city mutant. Uh, so that is very interesting. We don't uh, other than what cable cables, a city mutant. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be great. Basic one all for one attack primary target for 320 percent damage and copy and clear one positive effect, including regeneration. Spread all positive effects, 
in, in, excluding taunt and regeneration to multiple men. So they're going to have death proof. So the death proof is going to get spread for sure. Uh, kind of reminds me of some of the Ultron bots. Gain 75% extra focus for this attack. And this attack cannot crit. And uh, the, that is okay because uh, if they did crit, uh, boy, Shatterstar and Longshot would just pop off with their passives. In the passive, all for one, unspawn, apply counter to all the multiple men that summoned this dupe. So there you go. 25% focus. And so this is, uh, I imagine this is here just to um, disrupt something with um, probably some sort of negative interaction with Mr. Sinister would be my guess on the reason why they did that. Let's go to the ultimate because the ultimate's pretty cool. The ultimate is 6-8, so this will not go off turn one. Basically, turn one, he's going to summon two, two dupes, and they're going to come into battle with taunt and death proof. Fantastic. He's going to clear all the negative facts off himself, and he'll get immunity for one turn. Then, on turn two, he's going to summon nine dupes. We talked about that at the beginning, is that basically it's going to fill the board up. So if you have six, six, uh, six total characters plus dupes out, then you're going to get four more. It's going to cap out at 10. Apply offense up for two turns and two countered all X factor. Boy, I guess say offense up uh, just to go over to long shot. Sounds quite amazing if you ask me. And dupe allies. Fill speed bar by 30% for all dupe allies. Quite good. And then lastly, his basic one-two punch attack primary target for 320% damage. This attack gains 10% damage per dupe ally. Um, I got to applaud them for some creativity on this kit. I actually think it's Pretty cool. I, I, I really think this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to playing him. Um, I'm also very curious how Polaris is going to work. Uh, and I do think this is also a very creative way of creating a protector that just doesn't taunt and stand there. It's kind of fun. I like it. I like this kit a lot. Very, uh, I love it. It sounds like fun. Uh, kits in this game have been getting more, uh, more complicated, but also more creative in my opinion. Uh, I do like that quite a bit. Let's go on. Legendary event rotation. So, after three years protecting Nexus Third Strike features an impressive list of legendary characters. At this point, we're going to start running other older legendary events. And so, in this post, they're going to uh, talk about Invisible Woman coming back and also uh, Star Lord. They said they they also said that they're going to change the calendar notification. They're going to give less shards. But I got a a message from Cerebro and Zeke saying that they're gonna these events are going to be coming way more frequently. Uh, and so that it's going to offset for that for sure. Uh, at this point, we start running older legendary events more often, added bonus for increased accessibility. This means that there should be more than one legendary event running simultaneously and they can recur more often. Uh, bonus event gets two times shards for required characters on campaign nodes. And then they also said instead of doing a legendary calendar, they're just going to drop it in uh, the, the calendar. They're just going to drop it in the inbox. Uh, but they're going to lower the number of shards. So it's not going to be five. It's going to be three. But my understanding of these events are going to be coming around much more frequently, maybe as, as much as twice as much. We're doing this to minimize counter clutter with multiple legendary events we're running, make this process more automated. And it's a small thing, but I, I kind of wish they would have just did five shards. I mean, two shards is kind of petty. Why not just make it five? We'll keep you informed of when future legendary events move into this increased recurring pattern. And that's when the character shards move from the daily lolling calendar to being delivered instead of through inbox messages. Invisible Woman will kick things off soon. But now you see me, more legends will be added soon and be on the lookout for future editions. And then we've got the reoccurring legendary event is going to be Star-Lord. This is probably for me, um, in addition to the creativity of the multiple men's kit, but also this right here is probably the most exciting thing in this post right here is that beast is going to be moving into Nexus 5-6. So he's going to be fountainable, farmable, whatever they want to call it. It's kind of a big deal. Upcoming Blitzes. Uh, I don't think we're going to get any Blitz characters for a while. Uh, new release Blitz characters. So we're going to get, uh, for a lot of people, these are going to be off Blitzes. Uh, what that means is like, if I've, you know, because I've already got America Chavez at seven stars, I can kind of take it off. Uh, so they're announcing Chavez and Scream right here. Bonus of Flash events. Rack up character shards with line with your pockets with gold. And these upcoming bonus and flash events from our former bonus events. Filter your roster using the feature trait to find all eligible characters and their corresponding nodes. Part of Women's History Month celebration. Power up your roster. Warbird. And get double drops on Captain Marvel. And double drops on Sinister Six for Invisible Woman. 
I, I do wish, you know, whenever I see these double drops, I wish that they had a guaranteed drop. Because two times zero is still zero sometimes. Uh, and then Neighborhood Watch, so we got sitter, double drops on City Hero. And so we're just going to have to pay attention to uh, the events tab for when those events to come. So at the end of the day, let me just say this. Multiple man's kit looks pretty, pretty good. It looks interesting. It looks creative. Beast is going to be farmable. We're going to have some uh, anniversary events. The part that kind of annoys me is, do they want us to hoard or not hoard? It seems like if you were somebody that hoarded this, uh, this currency right here, you get the benefit. And it seems like they go out of their way to reward hoarders. And then the other sand say, don't hoard. And, and just the timing of boosting this currency, you know, uh, and then they boosted it last week. And then this week we have to, we're, we're supposed to hoard it. Um, I also want to say this. It seems to me that the rewards from Dark Dimension 2 were designed to be hoarded so that you could go into Dark Dimension 3. And then the rewards that you were given in Dark Dimension 3 were needed to be hoarded so that you could go quickly into Dark Dimension 4. Dark Dimension 4 really doesn't have an abundance of rewards at the end of it. I'm just saying, it looks like that's not going to be the case for Dark Dimension 5. The primary reward in Dark Dimension 4 is, is Doom. And, and there's not a ton of gear in it. And so I'm not sure what they're doing with that. Does this bother you? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, let me know what you think about this post in general. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and keep on gaming. Bye for now. To, ho to hoard or not hoard? That is the question. My God.